I'm a man that is a teacher that is grinding every day to become a better person internally and externally, but people don't see that. And I feel neglected and I feel mistreated. I feel misused. I just feel like what's the point of even being around anymore? I don't want to break down and cry right now thinking about it because you wanted me and others because I couldn't give you what you thought you needed. I can't give you $8,000 for your mom's graduation party because you asked for it. He asked for faith that. No, he didn't. Hold on a second. I got these people in my mouth. Look, if it's your first time here, this is going to really help you and it'll help the algorithm as well. If you go back and watch the first part of this conversation, just so you caught up, you got no questions. If you're asking me, don't be interrupted. Take a listen. Give me your feedback at the end. If you have any suggestions for this dude, we'd love to hear that as well. But engage in the conversation. Leave me something down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it. You liked it. You didn't like it. Yeah, don't do this again. Or do more of this. You know, give me that. And that showed me a lot more about myself and how willing I am to look past people's flaws, to make myself feel loved for myself because I'm looking for it in someone else rather than myself. Do you believe that there's someone out there who wants the same things that you want? Absolutely. There are 8 billion people in this world. Why am I caught on one? Because this one rocked my world in a way that I never thought it would, would be rocked. I was on a solid foundation and I thought, I, at least I thought I was on a solid foundation. I thought I built a, a, a foundation that was unbreakable. And yet here I am confined to my mind and not with that person to speak, to contemplate, to ponder, to reflect because all I wanted was you and you ruined that because you wanted me and others because I couldn't give you what you thought you needed. I can't give you $8,000 for your mom's graduation party because you asked for it. I can't give you a trip to Spain on a whim's notice. I can't give you a job because you need one because your, your manager pissed you off. I can't give you those things. I can give you support and comfort and knowing that it's going to be okay. I can give you comfort and knowing that you're safe with me and that I can float us through whatever as long as you trust me. And I think that's the part of it. That's the part of intimacy people don't understand is that vulnerability comes with trust. And if I could trust you, I can be vulnerable with you. If I can untrust you, there's nothing. Well, it's just I built on trust. And if I can't trust you, there's nothing you can be doing right now. I'm just wasting my time. And that's what I feel like I have done. I have wasted my time. So now I'm sitting here chasing time to get back what I lost. I lost myself in you. And I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at myself because I learned a lesson. I can't trust anyone but myself. Did the situation start with um, a hookup? It started off as a hookup, yeah. And, um, and, and, how and, he, initi and he initiated. That's what actually makes it worse, too. For me, is the fact that we started up as hookups and then we ended up just kind of like having sex. Not casual, but we had sex here and there frequently. But then he initiated going out on dates. He initiated the whole thing. And then when I started to actually show up in that way, he got scared and recognizing that, oh, you're actually serious about dating me. He got scared and he pulled away. Well, I never did any of that, which is why I say I can't be mad at myself or him because he was not emotionally intelligent to understand that I'm actually there for him. Maybe he just saw something that he didn't like. You know, like you, you like something and then all of a sudden you're like, mm, I don't like this anymore. When you say he was trying to push you away and everything, he was doing everything to not. So it seems to me that this person did what would be known as that they switched things up. If they pursued you and then they wanted you to go out on dates with them, and then they stop wanting those things or they stop wanting those things from you, then it's possible that that was it, that they got what they wanted from you for as long as they wanted it from you. And then they just didn't want it from you anymore. And that's okay. But I would rather you say that versus continuing to lead me on to thinking that this could be worked out versus playing in my face and playing in my feelings to do things to make me push you away or to make me not up an opportunity. And that's the part that kind of kills me. It's like, that's what I mean. People are willing to be vulnerable. People think that uncomfortable conversations will lead to conflict or lead to a distance or lead to violence in any kind of way. When I'm not that person, a conversation can go a lot further than just a moment of, of up to you. I hate you. It's not going to give that because I don't give that. A conversation can be mutually understood as, okay, what did I do to make you push me away? Or what did you not like 
and not so that I could change myself, but so I can reflect upon my, I cannot change myself, but reflect upon what you say to see if, not to see if that's true, but to really reflect on my behavior to not change it, but y'all are getting this right to improve upon how I might show up for others. Like I like to look at it as a learning lesson or a lesson learned. How can I improve myself to get better? But if you're not willing to have the conversation, but you, all you want to do is just push it away to figure out your own issue. Yeah, I'm kind of over it. I get it. I think if I could offer any piece of advice, whether it be solicited or appreciated or not, is that you can only control yourself and that People are going to do what they want to do. Everything that you've said, it sounds like, yeah, in a perfect world, a person would give you an explanation of why they didn't do what they said they, they would do. A person would be able to tell you, this is what you did that made me not like you anymore and have the uncomfortable conversation. But people aren't comfortable with being uncomfortable. The sooner you accept that fact that people are not comfortable with the uncomfortable parts of life, and they'll do everything to get out of it. That's why people lie. That's why people steal. That's why people will tell you whatever to your face just to get out of it. And then they'll go behind your back, and talk to somebody else about you and your situation. Instead of just saying that to the person themselves and saying, I don't like you because of this. And honestly, people can't handle that. And because they can't handle it, it turns to violence. And so that's why we fear the confrontation because people have the tendency to blow up. That's why we're shocked when a person handles it cool and you're like, wait, so we're being mature about this and I can tell you how I feel and you can just, but the world isn't a perfect world. So that's just my two cents. Try to understand that you can want this from this person, but they don't owe you that. Like you, you can feel that they owe you, but the minute they checked out, the minute they did, the minute they did something to cross one of your boundaries, whether you spoke it or not, well, anything that you went along with that you didn't want to do, and they continue to make you do those things because now you've made them feel comfortable that it was okay to do it, you should have stopped it from them. Because it, it sounds like they could have possibly been sending you mixed signals, but it also seems as if they were saying, this is not what I want. And then whenever it was convenient for them, they pick it back up again, making you believe that it was what they wanted. When in reality, they were done. That's why they would ask you for money. They would ask you for these extravagant things that they knew you couldn't provide just so that, okay, well, if he can't give me this and I'll be done with it. But then they'll try to give you another chance by, oh, well, I'll let you take me out to eat because you can afford that. But you can't afford to send me to Spain, but you can buy me a couple of meals here and there. So I'm okay with that. And that's not cool. Yeah. 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 All is true. How long was that situation? I don't think I got a time frame. How long from the time when you first swiped on the app, you hooked up to... I don't go on the apps because they make me typically either feel not good, disgusted, angry, a whole bunch of different emotions depending on who's messaging me. For example, you talking to somebody, you build a rapport, you build trust as much as you can without meeting somebody and it being some type of security. But like when you first plan to meet them, when you're like, oh, I mean, you struggle to stuff that. And they just stand you up. You don't ever get an answer for why they stand you up. They don't ever reach out, contact you. It's like, I just wasted gas. You know what I'm saying? I just, like, what, what was this? This was like a goal on a week for what? About six, seven months. And was that the longest that you were talking to or dating someone? No. Okay. I don't know. That situation was about seven months. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your experience. You're welcome. And your two cents on the the question that I asked, you know, I just wanted to get someone else's uh, input. You know, again, I've been married for what feels like forever now. I've been in a relationship for 14 years, and it's it's not something that I would be willing to do to be back out there on the dating market because it seems scary. Just from what I see online, it seems rough. It seems rough because like, re I agree with everything that you said, you know, in the sense that it, it seems like people don't really want what they think that they want and even outside of that it's just that it's too it's too convenient and People. i think that i think the other problem with the convenient factor is that because it is so convenient people aren't really necessarily sure if who they settle down with or who they're trying to make their potential boyfriend is the best that's out there on the market 
And then as the seasons change, it's like always oh, getting warm outside. I don't know if I want to be booed up with you because I need to go and travel. I need to go out there and see who else is out there. Yeah. And I think part of it is also if people don't know how to be honest with themselves or honest with the other person. Like, I think the one thing that I did communicate with that last person was like, as long as you tell me, there will never be any issues about us. Because I think that's the other issue too, is like, yeah, we were dating, but we were committed to each other. We were committed to each other, but we were dating each other. And I communicated that to this person frequently. Not frequently, but we had the conversation more than once. But because I never switched up on him, but he switched up on me, that's what kind of irked me a little bit more too, because I never changed up on him. But the moment he changed up on me, that's when I felt I was being used for something more than what I actually was. And this boy decided to cheat on me more than once. And I, I wouldn't say cheat, because that's like, we work together, so I can't even say cheat, but it's like... I wanted to break this up just for a quick second. Say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always hitting that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, Go ahead and do so now. It only takes a second. It doesn't cost you anything. I appreciate it. When you play in my face or you come back with hickeys on your neck or you come back with an STD or you come back with X, Y, and Z, when all you could have just told me was, yeah, babe, I want to, yeah, I had that with this. I did this and this and this. There's no sins as long as that permission. All you have to do is talk to me and be honest with me because I'm never going to look at you any kind of differently. I'm never going to look at you any kind of way because I know that you're your own. I know you're still in your 20s. I know you're still going through this. All you have to do is talk to me. And I think that's the issue that, just like you said, people don't have to be uncomfortable. People are uncomfortable with the uncomfortable. And I think that's what hurts the most is that I'm not willing to be uncomfortable all the time, but adult conversations and difficult conversations are very uncomfortable. People aren't willing to put themselves in it. They're easier. It's easier to just back out of it without actually having to face your own demons and face your own problems or face a conversation that you don't know what the result may be. Yeah, if it was, I need to. Well, actually, no, so you're right. I am very much so date jaded on dating. Like, I don't want to date anybody anymore at this point because I've been hurt too many times. I've been used too many times. Like, I feel like people only want me for my body or for my face or what they think I could bring to them versus like the nuances of what it is. So yeah, I, like I kind of gave up on love. I did it. That boy took all the love I had left. And I gave up on it and I don't want to do anything else at this point. My heart is very much so closed. I don't have any friends because my friends have lied to me. My friends have back bad to me. My friends have seen bad in the back. People I thought were friends aren't really friends. They're just people who just want to be around me because they know that if I'm blessed, they'll be blessed. I don't care for anyone anymore other than myself. And it's kind of sad because I kind of want to break down and cry right now thinking about it because it's just like, I never thought I would be the one to ever like, give up on love because I know, like granted, I have not been married for 14 years. I've not been married at all. I have not had a relationship longer than two years. So like, for me, it's just kind of like a growth. What is that I don't want to be loved, but it's kind of just like a why bother? Why date somebody who is as broken as they are? Who wants to date somebody like me? Why, why would you want to date me? Tell me more. I know my sister's is good, but why would you want to date me? And that boy took every last bit of love that I had left. And I ask God all the time, like, release me from him. Take me from him. Give me love back to me. And I want to say it goes on deaf ears, but that's how it feels. I feel alone. I feel used. I feel too I feel neglected as if there's no purpose for me on this earth other than to show up for people that don't ever show up for me and who will never show up for me because I don't provide money. I don't have a 12 inch cinch. I don't have a big ass ass and I don't have six pack ass and biceps. And I run my own business and provide six figure incomes like our seven figure incomes. I'm just the, I'm a man that is a teacher that's grinding every day to become a better person internally and externally, but people don't see that. And I feel neglected. And I feel mistreated, I feel misused. I just feel like, what's the point of even being around anymore? Why show up? Why bother? Why open myself up to things that won't ever happen? Or I feel like I won't ever find love. I feel <laughs> like I won't have anyone. I feel like I'm going to be a cat lady or a dog dad for the rest of my life. And nothing that's a bad thing with shitting on anyone that is going through that, but it's like, 
I feel like no one will ever want to love or be with me when I don't provide for them the way that they want me to or they think I need to because I'm not I'm not the aesthetic. I'm a vibe, but I'm not the aesthetic. Are those things that you want to change about yourself? No. Okay. So like, do I want like, no, no, well, let me rephrase that. Do I want to have a seven figure income? Absolutely. That's why I'm grinding it out now. Do I want to have a, a better body? Absolutely. But I feel like I have pretty good health. I'm in good health. I have a pretty sane, sane mind. I mean, I do have my own mental things going on, but that's all actually under control. Do I want to be stronger and firmer in certain things? Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, why would I want somebody to show up at my MVP game when I'm getting my award when I can have somebody who's in the gym shooting with me? But if you come to me when I'm at my MVP game, I'm going to look at you like, you just want me for this. You don't want me for anything else. And that might be true. I mean, as someone who's been in that example of what you're, you're mentioning, but if you're doing it for the right reasons, if you're doing it for yourself, then maybe you'll even meet somebody along the way. Once you start to heal, start to get yourself focused on you and prioritizing yourself. And that'll be what the person will be attracted to. They'll see that you've got your dish together and they want to be attached to someone who has their dish together. Not so much as that you you're you know you're at the the championship game and you you've got your mvp like i don't think that they'll you'll attract those type of people but at the same time you'll also be able to smell them from a mile away that that's all they want like but if it's something that you want then and that that's for anything whether that be love whether that be the seven figure income if you want it you have to understand that it's not just going to fall in your lap even the relationship i didn't look up and this just was just happened overnight it didn't it was hard work and I had to go through a lot of really horrible experiences, experiences that I hate thinking about at times, but I'm able to say that it made me who I am today, not to be all cliche of like, oh, I had to go through it to get here. But if I didn't experience the bad times, I don't think I'd be able to recognize a good thing. And I understand that too. That's what, so that's what makes this whole thing hard. Uh, I get that. I do. I really do. I just feel like, I feel like the time, I feel like no one cares. Sorry, that's a tangent. I just... I think that you're just in that space right now. And while you're in that space, that's what you're going to feel like. And it's fine to feel like that while you're there, but you just got to understand that you can't stay there. So feel it while you're in it. And then make the plan to, to see yourself on the other side. Because... When you feel like this, you've also got to remind yourself about the days when you couldn't stop laughing. You got to remind yourself of the times when you were at the top of the mountain. You got to know that you'll get back there. So you can't let one turkey make you think that, ah, oh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm falling off or I'm not, I'm not me. Like, you know, all the things that you bring to the table and you know that a person that would, anybody that would be with you would be lucky to be with you because of said things. Um, so don't worry about the people that, that don't see that in you. I actually see those people as blessings for not being able to see the beauty in me because you just waste my time. So it's like the people that think that I'm ugly and the people that think that, that I'm too short or I'm this or I'm that or whatever, I'm glad that they didn't give me the attention because I wouldn't be at peace the way that I am every night when I lay down in the comfortable place that I met. Yeah, I just, I initially had the one, you know, question prompt that I had, um, and it was just to kind of see where the conversation went. And but that's all, I didn't have any expectations. I'm approaching it from a different angle, um, hookups on the spectrum, because it's just a little different finicky things or whatever. Like for instance, I'd rather host than go to somebody else's house because I know that mm. there's a certain level of cleanliness. And then knowing that there's a certain group of guys that I'm not gonna be interested in just because of probably the, them knowing how to clean themselves correctly. So yeah, we're not gonna do that. And it's just all these things that I felt that people that are able to be more freely sexually with themselves, they, I guess they have that advantage. But for me, now I want to take a shower first or in a bathroom or whatever in public. Hats off to them, but I need to shower. And then I saw this guy online. He made a, I, I don't know, I guess it would be, maybe it was an ableist comment. He said, I swear most of you guys have got to be on the spectrum because there ain't no way. It's just the fact that even in something that's supposed to be, I don't want to say a safe space, but you're on this app for a hookup and you got to worry about people that's using on the spectrum or calling you autistic as an insult. So then you think about how normal do you appear to the person? 
Like, are my quirks showing or do I come across as normal? Am I too talkative? And then you offer somebody something to drink. Well, is that odd? Should I do that? Because I know most people probably don't do that, but just because other people don't do it, does that mean I don't do it? Unless you have anything else to add, I... I'm just trying to figure out how to heal my heart so that way I can't open myself to love again. I'm trying to find out a way to open my mind so that way I'm not so stuck in what the past was. But it's just hard to let go when you know what was real and you know what's not. But people tell you how you should feel. People tell you how you should move. People tell you who you should date or who you shouldn't date versus actually just being in the moment and letting it be. Um, and that's it. Yeah.